Hi, let's look at how to use the Kesa AI code editor along with Claude 3.5 Sonnet to draw and animate these progress rings in Swift UI. So let's get started. We are going to use this screenshot as our starting point. You can see here it is consistent of three rings. We are going to use the image along with a series of prompts. In total, I use four prompts to draw and animate the progress rings. But once you engineer your prompts very well, you can use two or three prompts in total. To learn more about how to create effective prompts for large language models, you can check this academic paper, The Prompt Report, a systematic survey of prompting techniques. You can find the paper from azev.org. Before you start, you should make sure you have the Kesa AI code editor downloaded and installed on your machine. I have it already installed, so let's launch it. Once you launch Kesa, there are a couple of things you can do. You can create a couple of folders and files to start working with. But since we are going to do the actual implementation in Xcode, we don't need the files and folders. Over here, I have already created an empty file, but we are not going to use it. You can see we have progressranks.swift. So I have it as the file that is currently opened. Once you open a file, you can press Command and L to bring the AI chat window. So on the right is the AI chat window. Once you have that, there are a couple of things you can do. You can give a prompt and select your large language model to search through the web using an image or using a specific documentation. So this is the screenshot I showed previously. And this is the first prompt I gave. I prompted the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet model to extract the progress rings from the image using the SF symbols seen in the image and draw the rings as they are shown in the image. So based on the prompt I gave, it also responded with this text and gave this code as the output. So let's look at the code closely. Over here, it created a struct for the progress ring, which conforms to a standard Swift UI view and defined these properties of the ring. In the body of some view, it added a circle and styled it with all these modifiers. So over here, we have the inactive progress ring and the active progress ring showing as an overlay. Then on the top part of the code, it added a ZStack parent container and created an instance for each of the ranks. So you can see over here, we have an instance of the pink progress ring, the middle ring, which is green, and also the inner ring, that is the smaller ring, which is cyan. So this part of the code, that is the VStack, consists of the SF symbols shown in the image. If I bring the image again, these are the three SF symbols. For the arrow symbols, I think it didn't get my instruction very well. So let's see how it displayed them by copying the complete code. We can click apply to show it in this current file. Since we need this code in Xcode, we don't need to click apply. Let's copy that and go back to Xcode. Let's select the animation folder, control click it and choose the option new file from template. You can see over here, it is just a Swift UI view. So let's click next and name it activity ring. We don't need the project navigator anymore, so let's hide it. I have the code copied from Kesa in my clipboard, so I'm going to paste it here. You can see the struct is activity ranks, so let's add an S here to let go of the arrow. You can now see it clearly in S code. This is what the AI model generated. It did a great job generating the progress ranks, but added a background color which we do not need, and also added the SF symbols but did not arrange them well. But once you have something like this, you can easily go through the code and edit it yourself. For example, we don't need a background color, so let's find it. If I select this Z stack, here is the background. So let's remove that because we don't need it. So that leaves us the inactive and active ranks, as well as the SF symbols. We can also reposition the SF symbols to the correct positions. For example, let's select the first one Control click it and choose the option embed in Z stack. Once you have it in a Z stack, you can add parentheses here and align the content to the top. So we're going to move this SF symbol from the V stack here because we don't need the V stack and place it there. Now we have the pink ring as well as the arrow right, which is pink. In the parentheses, we can align the content to the top. 
so the arrow and the progress ring have the same color to see its position well let's change it to for example white you can now see we have it right here we can also use pattern to move it up or down if you want i checked previously giving it a pattern of minus eight push it in the center we can do the same thing for the green arrow so i'm going to copy this c stack and paste here and paste another one here as well then i'm going to move this ring and place it here and also remove the image and replace it with this one we can also change the color to white we also need a pattern as well so i'm going to place it here another thing you should also do is to replace the instance of foreground color which has been duplicated with foreground style so we can change this to style so anywhere you see foreground color you can put foreground style let's go to the second prompt chain by folding this code with that we don't need the code here so we can select everything and delete it so let's go back to Kesa. by scrolling down a bit we go to the second prompt so here we have the explanation to the first prompt at this point i asked the model to add a button with label show progress below the ranks and anytime one taps on the button the progress ranks should draw from 0 to 1 by trimming using animation i went ahead to specify a specific easing for the pink ring so you can see here i have ease in and i have ease out for the green ring and ease in out i forgot a period here but it still went ahead to generate a new code so here we have the code from the second prompt as you can see it added this button with all these styles and also added one state variable for the animation in the parent zstar container it also added the background as well which we don't need so these are the previous progress ring instances but now it also added these animations as i specified in the prompt so let's copy that and go back to xcode i'm going to paste everything here we are going to leave the arrow symbols as they are because i have already showed you how to place them to the right positions on the ring so by going to the preview mode anytime we tap the button we show the progress animation so let's preview that again so for this animation it looks like the middle ring which is the green ring happens first followed by the blue ring and lastly the pink ring although all the easing equations is in is out and is in out start and finish at the same time they have different acceleration and deceleration so we can create an impression that the blue ring is happening first followed by the green ring and lastly the pink ring in order to create that perception we will leave the pink ring as it is and swap these easings so let's change this to easing out and change this to ease out if we tap the button again the blue one will happen first followed by the green and followed by the pink that is cool if this is what you are looking for you can even end here with this kind of animation because we easily modify the easing equations to create a really nice progress animation here inside SwiftUI but I want to show you how you can still modify this animation by issuing another prompt so let's scroll down a bit so this part is giving an explanation of what happened in the second prompt so let's scroll down over here I gave another prompt to modify the animation so that when the button is tapped the pink ring trains from 0 to 0 0.75 the green from 0 to 0 0.6 and the blue ring from 0 to 0 0.4 the original code generation from prompt 1 had these exact values however based on the second prompt i gave i changed each progress ring from 0 to 1 so the pink ring animated from 0 to 1 the green ring from 0 to 1 and also the blue ring from 0 to 1 as well also in the end i wanted to add animation completion if i go back to xcode again and preview the animation once everything ends you can see we are now in the 100% state that is animating from 0 
to 1. So I wanted to add an animation completion so that when the animation ends, we reset the progress back to 0. So let's fold this code again and delete it and add the one from the third prompt. So from this third prompt, this is the generated code. So this animation is similar to the one generated by the second prompt. Since I wanted the progress ranks to have different values for the animation end states, it added these three state variables and set the initial state of each to zero. If I scroll down, you can see over here in the final animation state, it set the pink one to 0 0.75. As I stated in the prompt, the green one to 0 0.6 and the blue one to 0 0.4 and also added the animation completion. But this is not exactly what I meant. I think it didn't get the instruction about the animation completion well. That is this part. We will still go ahead and modify it with a final prompt. But for now, let's copy this one and paste it in Xcode. Once you tap the button, they draw from these values to these final animation values and also once the animation ends they erase from these values to zero that is not exactly what i wanted so let's go back to the final prompt and modify it i'm going to fold this and remove the code and go back to kesa i'll scroll down and go to the final prompt so here i stated nice however do not trim the ranks back to zero in the animation completion, set the opacity to zero instead. So here it went ahead to say, well, understood. Then it modified the code further. So you can see over here, it added another state variable to animate the opacity for the animation completion. So if I scroll down further, this is what it did. It added the animation completion and used dispatch queue to set the opacity of the views to zero after 0 0.1 second with a duration of 0 0.5 seconds. These are not perfect values, but once you preview the animation in Xcode, you can just go ahead and modify it to how you want it to be. So let's copy the final code and go back to Xcode and paste it here. If we press the button, it shows the progress animation and remove it immediately. So we can come here and modify the animation any way we want. For example, changing the duration here to 1 to make the progress ranks draw faster or 0 0.5 and changing the deadline to 0 0.5 as well or maybe 1. So you can now modify the animation any way you want by changing all these values. So that is everything we have in this video. I have shown you how to use the Kesa AI code editor along with Claude 3.5 Sonnet to generate designs and animate them in SwiftUI. Thanks for watching this video.